You used to tell me when we're live. Now we're live. Hello and good morning, afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, for Pete Town Fresh. Oops, sorry about that. Just uh, trying to make sure we're right in the center for you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for Pete Town Fresh Sunday edition. Uh, today's date is Sunday, December the first, two thousand and fourteen. 13. Wow, I'm about to go ahead a whole year. <laughs> wow, well, you we said 2014, um, we going to say 13. And we're excited to be with God today. Amen? Amen. So we're going to go ahead, uh, and we apologize for us getting late, uh, getting started late. There was some technical difficulty going on with my camera, but we got all that set. But uh, we're about to go ahead and get set up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let all our Facebook friends know that we're starting. And let's, as they say... Get this show on to the road. Everybody, we alerted everyone, let our Facebook viewers know that we're um, starting live. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer. What? Uh, no. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get started with a word of prayer. Hallelujah, Lord God. Most gracious Father, we just thank you and bless your name, God. I thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you for this gathering together, God, to just to celebrate you and love upon you. I thank you for the truth of your word, God, and I pray that you'll help us to understand your word today. Help us to apply it to our hearts and to our lives and help others to apply it to theirs. I pray that you'll allow this word today specifically to be an encouragement to us, God, to help that small place in all of us, God, that where we really struggle with. We thank you, Father, and give you glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 That's what's up. All right. Well, I'm excited. Um, I definitely am excited. You know, especially with all that God has been doing in our lives. I'm definitely excited about P-Town Fresh uh, Sunday today. Um, you know, one of the things that I firmly believe is that as anybody is a pastor, minister, teacher, whatever, as we share the word, we ought to be first, as the Bible says, first partakers. So we ought to benefit from it as well. We can't act like we're just teaching something that we haven't been through. And so today's message is something that's been is almost almost rather personal to me. You know, it's something that I've dealt with for a while, and hopefully, you know, this might encourage many of you as well as it has me. So, with that in mind, um. Come on, come on. All right, now, today's lesson, the message is titled, Measuring with a Broken Ruler. Measuring with a Broken Ruler. Something to think about, isn't it? All right. How many of you have ever had to measure something? I know I have. I've had to measure many things with my little home improvement projects and this and that. You know, I was looking in the shed earlier um, yesterday, and I noticed something that I didn't measure correctly. <laughs> you know, I was looking, and one of my beams on my shed that I built is actually not level. Now, I don't know if it was because of the way it was when I built it or if it was that I didn't take the time or maybe, you know, it shifted over time. But for whatever reason then I know that 
that was not level. So I realized the importance of measuring, right? And it's not just building. How many of you? Uh, how many of you are cooks? We got any cooks in here? So you realize that if you cook, and you know we just had this wonderful holiday, a whole lot of people were cooking up the storm. But and as much as I love food, and one of my favorite foods is sweet potato pie. But if you make a mistake and put salt instead of sugar, mm. Mm, you can't fix that. No, There's no way to fix that. You know, some recipes or some meals, if you make a mistake, like say for instance, if you make some spaghetti, you know, if you don't put enough salt in it, you can add a little bit of salt or season into your own bowl. But let me see you try to put some sugar into an already made pie or already made cake. Or let's just say, for instance, instead of a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, you put a cup of nutmeg. Yeah. Can you imagine that? When they eat it. So they run you out of your house. Exactly. So, so do you understand? So we all can. You said you can what? I'm gonna try. He said he's gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand the importance of knowing and having the proper measure. So with that in mind, let us go to our text today, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, for those of you who are just joining us today, um, last week we had an opportunity to, to really get into some good stuff. You know, we learned about the growth of sin. And how many of you know it's very important to Stop stink, sin before it gets started. And so we learned about the growth of sin. We learned about how to address it even when it's a fault. So to stop it in its infancy stages. Sin's the only thing I'm going to abort before it gets full grown. So how to abort the sin before it actually happens. So we learned about that last week. Then we learned about some of the stages. We learned about the stage of the seeing it, we learned about the stage, the second stage, which is the desiring, and the third stage, which is the action, the action, the want, the taking. All right. So with that in mind, but we're continuing on, and there are some other things that we might struggle with, and a lot of times we think of sin in the area of things that we commit, so to speak. You know, like, okay, well, I'm going to go over there and sleep with my neighbor's wife, or I'm going to take this money from my job, even though they're not looking. You know, these are some of the ways we look at the sins. But that's not just the only type of sin that there is. Okay? Sin at its heart is what we call missing the standard. You know, um, in... in Sin, the, the word where the English term comes from, if you would take a, say, for instance, an archer. And an archer's goal is, you know, like a professional archer or, you know, sportsmanship or whatever the case is, to do what? Hit the target, the target or the bullseye. And so any time when they didn't hit the bullseye, they would call out sin. So... That's what sin is. Sin is not hitting the target. But how many of you know that many times if we don't measure the right way, you're also going to fail to hit the target. So with that in mind, let's get into this thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7 through 18. And I'll be reading to you from the New Century Version. You must look at the facts before you. If you feel sure that you belong to Christ, you must remember that we belong to Christ just as you do. It is true that we brag freely about the authority the Lord gave us. But this authority is to build you up, not to tear you down. So I will not be ashamed. I do not want you to think I'm trying to scare you with my letters. Some people say Paul's letters are powerful and sound important. But when he's with us, He's weak, and his speaking is nothing. Somebody say he talks a good game. 
they should know this. We're not there with you now, so we say these things in letters. That's the reason why. But when we are there with you, we will show the same authority that we show in our letters. We do not dare to compare ourselves with those who think that they're very important. They use themselves to measure themselves. And they judge themselves by what they themselves are. This shows that they know nothing. But we will not brag about things outside the work that was given us to do. We will limit our bragging to the work that God gave us. And this includes our work with you. We are not bragging too much as we would be if we had not already come to you. But we have come to you with the good news of Christ. Mm. We limit our bragging to the work that is ours, not what others have done. We hope that as your faith continues to grow, you will help our work to grow much larger. We want to tell the good news in the areas beyond your city. We do not want to brag about work that has already been done in another person's area. But if people want to brag, they should brag only about the Lord. It is not those who say they are good or accepted, but those the Lord thinks are good. Woo, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? So let's break this down. Who's talking here? This was Paul, all right, the great apostle Paul. And Paul is being extremely real with what was going on in his life at the time. Okay, so he was being taunted by some people who were saying, uh, Paul, all he does is he just what? He talks a good game. You know, he just talks a good game. His bark, you know, that's just his bark. You don't got to worry about his bite. He just talks and says that. But he really isn't about that life. All right, so with this in mind, Paul was placed in a position where, how would you feel if somebody said that to you? We always, huh? Kind of the sense that, you know, you'll say to yourself, hey, wait a minute. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on one more time. Let me go ahead and switch to you. All right, say that again. Let's I see. think I'll be on guard and kind of defensive because I'll be like, hey, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what I'm really trying to say because it's evident that you don't understand what I'm saying at this point. Okay. So we have to dialogue. All right. That's good. Now, I'm going to tell you one way in which we deal with this time, many times. How many of you have been placed in a situation where you were boosted up because they was like, oh, he said he can beat you. Oh, well, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? And so then what do you feel? You feel the urge, like, you feel like what? I got to, well, well, let's do it. I got to prove myself. But in reality, is there any reason to prove yourself? Yeah. See, that's the problem. We get in trouble with trying to prove ourselves instead of understanding and accepting who God made us to be. See, that's the first thing. Paul was put in a position where he was being made to prove himself. Now, another situation where we might feel like that is you might, maybe you might feel to your parents, feel like with your parents, you know, you got to prove something, you know, I'll show them. You know, how many of you have done that before? We, we, we've ever said that before? Okay. All right. No, I, I don't have to invite them. They just have to. Um, I'm sorry. To, for those of you who are wondering what's going on, somebody is trying to get online and uh, join our chat. But um, all they have to do is, uh, are they on Google Plus? Yeah. Um, are they trying to join the video chat, or are they just trying to see the stream? She was trying to join the video chat. Okay. Um. Then all they have to do is is go on my Google Plus page. Google Plus. Uh, I think it's a uh, plus Google. I forgot what, what it is. How my actual um, thing is plus Google dot plus Google dot com or whatever. Um, Darren Moore, D A R O N. 
and that should allow them to automatically join the video. And I'll take a look and see it here as well. Let me make sure here. See if, because uh, what should happen is I should get a link. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can invite them as well. Hold on one moment. Just trying to uh, do something here. Chat. I recommend. Um, where do we invite people? Uh, oh, I thought I saw something. No, Google Effects, no. Uh, oh, here it is. Invite people. All right, let me see. Let me try to invite, add this people to this video call. I'm going to try to send an actual email. So uh, let me see this here. WTA. Hold on one second, y'all. Okay. I guess this is Tasha White. No. Oh no. Okay. No. No. There was something. Well, I guess that's who it comes up as. W. Tasha seven one one at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll try it. All right, we just posted an invitation to Tasha, so uh, she hopefully might be able to join us by video. All she'll have to do is click on that link. And that goes to anyone else. Anyone else who's trying to join us in the video stream, please feel free. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. Um, all right. So, but as we were saying, we were talking about how has anyone been in that situation where you even feel like you have to prove something to your parents? You know, you got to prove to them that you'll make it. You know, I have a friend of mine, and um, his test, he has a very unique testimony, and, you know, when he was in school, he was in special education. And his teachers said that, oh, well, you're never going to do anything. You're never going to be anything. But to this day, he now has, is a teacher. He now has a certification as an administrator. And I believe he, I know he has one master's degree. He might even have two master's degrees. You know, and so so sometimes we might feel like we have to do that. But here's a question. Have you ever dealt with self-esteem issues? Maybe felt like you weren't good enough? Maybe because you didn't have the right clothes? You didn't have the right look? You were too big, too small? Maybe one eye was a little smaller than the other? Okay. Wait, that, that must mean that... Huh? Oh, that was from you. Okay, I didn't know that was. All right. So I know myself, I spent a great deal of my early years dealing with that. I tried to fit in. And, you know, because I felt like I had to prove something. I felt like, you know, I had to prove to the world I fit in. They didn't accept me as I was because, you know, my glasses, I, I, I got in, you know, in fights or whatever the case was playing basketball. So, my glasses, instead of getting new glasses, my dad was like, well, forget it. You're just going to have to put some tape on. So I walked around with big old tape on my glasses. You know, I didn't have the newest clothes all the time because my father didn't take me shopping. You know, I, I, I'd be lucky to get whatever I got. So, you know, I'm, and I didn't have the, the newest sneakers all the time. So because of this, and plus I was a little different, I was a little smarter than a lot of my peers. You know, I had this high level of vocabulary. And so what I ended up doing was kind of shutting that down in order to fit in. But soon, somewhere along the line, God began to deliver me and help me to understand that you don't have to prove anything to anyone. I made you different for a reason. Because the problem is, if I try to be like Mike, who's going to be like me? Who's going to do what God has called Darren Moore to do? And that's the problem. So many of us are so busy trying to fill someone else's shoes that we can't fill the shoes that we've been given by God. Is that making sense to anyone? Or if, hide in the group. You say what? Or hide in a group. People instead of fitting themselves <coughs> into a group to hide their individuality, so they become more of their group surroundings. Mm, come on, well, say that. Say that one more time. Um, 
Listen, I'm going to make sure that I put you on camera so, so they can see you say. People have to identify themselves with a group. Mm -hmm. Whatever the group is doing, they want to fit into this group so bad that they can mold themselves in and hide their true identity within that masses of a group. Mm. Say it every day. Come on. Now, here's a question. Is that the way? Hold on, let me switch back. Is God wants us to live? Yeah. No. No. But so many times we try to live life in someone else's shadow. And I'm going to tell you, see, preachers, pastors, we're not immune from that. We all deal with this. And so it might sound like good motivation on the outside. You know what? I'm going to do whatever I can to prove to them. But it's not godly motivation. And let me tell you why I say that. I want you to turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. And I'm going to read a couple of verses here. All right. So, once again, Paul talking to the church from Colossus. And here he says, everything you say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority. So he goes on and now, after he says, this is what we should be doing. Everything should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And now he's going on to illustrate the way, some of the ways that we can do this. So he says, look, wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority. This is appropriate behavior for the Lord's people. Husbands, love your wives and don't be harsh with them. Children, always obey your parents. This is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, don't make your children resentful or they will become discouraged. Slaves, always obey your earthly masters. Don't obey them only while you're being watched, as if you merely wanted to please people. Be sincere in your motives out of respect for your real master. Whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly as though you were working for your real master and not merely for humans. You know that your real master will give you an inheritance as your reward. It is Christ, your real master, whom you are serving. So he goes and he illustrates all the different ways, so many different ways, right? So we can find ourselves included there, right? You may not be a husband, you may not be a wife, but you're somebody's child, right? You, you might be a father, you might be a mother, you might be a worker. And here, to, in the, uh, just to clarify, when he's talking about slaves here, he's not talking, they're not talking about the same sense of inhumane slavery that we had and experienced in this country uh, you know, during the last 300, 400 years. We're not talking about that type of slavery. We're talking about the slavery on the level of more of an indentured servant. All right? So, but he's saying that whatever you do, do it not unto who? Unto man, but unto God. See, this indicates that our verse 23 and 24 here indicate our real approval, the true approval, the only approval that matters, which is found in God. Why? He's the only one who can reward us with our true inheritance. Does that make sense? He's the only one. So we don't have to worry about what someone else says. Like some of the old saints used to say, you know what, they don't have a what? A heaven or a hell to put you in. Y'all heard that before? Yeah. So don't worry about what they say. God has made you uniquely you. He's made me Darren Moore. I can only be Darren Moore. I can't try to be Aaron Moore Sr., my father. I can't do that. I can't try to be 
Darren Moore Jr., my son. I can't live my life through him. I can only do and be who God called me to be. So many times we're looking after someone else's acceptance. You're looking for man's approval when God already says that I love you as you are. The problem is we have to learn that. We have to accept that. And sometimes it's hard. It's hard to break through those layers that we've built up and allowed to build up over time. It's almost like, y'all know what a callus is? A callus forms by, at its heart, is dead skin. So what happens is, like, say, for instance, if somebody who is in martial arts, they want calluses to form because they want their knuckles to be hard so they don't feel anything when they punch. But what happens is, you get a layer of dead skin, then another layer of dead skin, and another layer of dead skin. And you have all of these layers of dead skin until you can't even feel for real. Some of us are allowed so many different areas of dead skin in our lives, metaphorically. We've allowed this what this person says we need to be. We've allowed how this person says that the media said you should look in order to be the, the, the figure, the model. We've allowed this person over here to say, well, you need to dress this way. We've allowed this person to say, you need to talk this way. You need to have this look. You can't be too dark. You can't be too light. We've allowed all of these wrong things to filter our hearts. And so now what happens is we form this this mountain of callous skin upon us so that we can't get to the real us because we're so busy trying to wear and look what somebody else wants us to be. We can't do that. What we have to learn is how to become content with God. See, I'm, we're going to turn again to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And Paul is talking again. And he's saying, and we're going to look at beginning in verse 3, and I'll be reading to you from the New Century Version this time. Anyone who has a different teaching does not agree with the true teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that shows the true way to serve God. This person is full of pride and understands nothing, but is sick with a love for arguing and fighting about words. This brings jealousy, fighting, speaking against others, evil mistrust, and constant quarrels from those who have evil minds and have lost the truth. They think that serving God is a way to get rich. Now get this, y'all. Serving God does not make us, pardon me, serving God does make us very rich if and only if we're satisfied with what we have. How many of you are satisfied? There used to be an old song that the saints used to sing talking about, I am so satisfied. I am so satisfied with my Savior. He means more to me than anything, anything that this world could ever offer. Here's a question. Are you satisfied truly with your Savior? Are you satisfied with God and how he made you? Are you satisfied with yourself and the skin that you're in? And he continues on. We brought nothing into the world, so we can take nothing out. But if we have food and clothes, we'll be satisfied with that. Those who want to become rich bring temptation to themselves and are caught in a trap. They want many foolish and harmful things that ruin and destroy people. The love of money causes all kinds of evil. No, it didn't say money. The love of it. Some people have left the faith even 
because they wanted to get more money. Woo! But they've caused themselves much sorrow. See, this is another way that we try to what? Fit in. Y'all remember that old that that old um I remember the old show um in Living Color. And I remember the role that Damon Wayans used to play. And Damon Wayans used to always have, you know, used to have this role, and he would be like, what? More money, more money, more money. Trying to get more money, right? He was hustling, he was trying to get every way he could to make and get all this money. But you know what? That's the way some of us are. We're steady working and working, and we're like a a, 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 rat, a mouse in a maze. We're like a hamster on a, a gerbil wheel. We're sitting there working and working to get more money, and the more money you get, guess what? You never get there. Have you ever noticed? Some of us have worked so hard on our job to be promoted. You made it. You started off in the mail room. You you made it a, high, a little bit higher than that. You know, you got yourself a little room in the office, but you're not satisfied with that. Then the next thing you will have to get a bigger office with a bigger room. Then you're not satisfied with that. And then you got to get an office that has a window to look out on all the other people who are at the bottom in the mail room. You notice something? We never can be content. The problem is, is that we can't become content and you can't become satisfied with what outside. If you always look outside of yourself, to satisfy you, newsflash, you will never be satisfied. You'll never be content with who God made you to be. But the moment that you begin to accept who God made you to be, accept your role in life, accept your purpose and plan as God has designated for you, that's the moment that you begin to have peace. Am I talking to anyone in here? Is, is this making sense? Yeah, yeah. See, the problem is, some of us try to gain approval by getting money. We think that somehow by having enough money, we'll be accepted. I got a question, though. When is it that we're going to stop trying to keep up with the Joneses and be the Moors, be the Parkers, be the Hindus, be the Killings, be the people that God wants us to be? <coughs> Mm. See, that's not the standard that God has for us. The Joneses, that's not the standard that God has for us. You got to look within yourself and your own personal relationship with God to understand what his true standard is for you. See, listen to this. And going back to 2 Corinthians again, chapter 10. Verse 12, Paul says, we do not dare to compare ourselves with those who think that they're very important. They use themselves <coughs> to what? <coughs> Measure themselves. And they judge themselves by what they themselves are. This shows that they know nothing. Am I, I'm, I'm, am I making this up? It's right here in the Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. See, Paul is saying we don't dare to compare ourselves with those who think that they're very important. Paul is realized. Now, let's be real. If there was anyone who had right who had issue and, and all of this, who had a right to have issues with this, it's Paul. Paul was the only one of the apostles who, because Paul wasn't made one of the twelve, was he? he came along after that. Paul was the only one who never walked with Jesus. So everybody else can say, Peter, James, John, Bro, what you talking about? Where you been? You better fall back. You weren't walking with, with us when we were walking with Jesus. You was out there hating on him. You was out there persecuting. You was out there trying to kill us. Right? That's the truth. So if anybody had some had a right to have issue 
It was Paul. Think about this. Everybody else, there, there's been, there was so much controversy going on with just Paul alone. Everybody else is saying, you know what? Well, in order to be saved, it's, 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 it's great that you're, you know, that you walked in, and these people they want to follow Jesus. Who, you know, you're a Gentile. You weren't brought up in the ways of Judaism. It's great that you want to do that. But really, if you really want to do that, then you need to do what? Go and get circumcised. Go and get cut. Cut your foreskin and cut your manhood at, at whatever age you are just so you can fit in. Right? Paul knew the struggle. And so Paul was like, look, you ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. He knew how to defend. He knew what the stance was. So Paul was seriously going through. And here you got Corinth. You know, Paul preached the gospel to him and raised him up. But there were some other people that were teaching. And some of these other people were saying some different stuff other than what he said. And that's why he told him in the earlier chapter, he said, look, if I, he said, or even a messenger from, from heaven, claiming that somebody claiming to be a messenger from heaven, teach you anything different, then what we taught you, let them be accursed. You understand? So Paul was dealing with some things. He, he had right to deal with some things. And this was a minister. This was a pastor. But here's the thing. He realized if he compared himself to the standards of Peter, James, John, or any of the other leaders who weren't part of the apostles, if he compared his ministry with theirs, the way he did things, the way they did things, he would never measure up because it's a false standard to begin with. And the Bible even says that a false standard is an abomination. So it says they use themselves to measure themselves. How are you going to use yourself to measure yourself? Does that make sense? That's like me saying, you know what, I'm going to make a cake. I'm going to teach everybody how to make a cake. But instead of a cup of flour, you're going to put what I say. Instead of a cup of flour, you're going to put a gallon of flour. So this is the way that I say to make this cup, this, this, this cake. So I don't care whatever what recipe says, what, what uh, whoever cook says, whatever her name is. But whatever your grandma says, this is the way to do it. I'm going to look pretty stupid on her. And you're going to look pretty stupid as well for listening to me. Especially if I ain't never cooked. And I'm going to tell you how to cook. If you're measuring your standard of success by what others have or what others do, that's a pretty short rule. Think about this. If everyone measured themselves and measured their height with a yardstick, then we all would think that we're giants. If we all measured ourselves and weighed ourselves on a scale that only went up to 100 pounds, we all would think that we're overweight. If you always measure yourself by looking at somebody else and what they have, you will never make the cut. Does that make sense? All right. So what we need is we need a true standard of measurement. Even in the world of physics, we have a, there's a true standard of measurement. And they have it in Gathersburg, Maryland, at the National Institutes of Standards and Measures. And, and they have this, you know, these certain things there that are exactly a meter in length, exactly one kilogram. So that's the actual standard that we measure everything by. If even the world and science knows to have a standard that's a proper, true standard, why can't we? Why do we want to pattern ourselves against after someone else? 
See, we can't have a standard and judge ourselves simply by how some how much someone else makes or what someone else has accomplished or even what someone else drives or the type of sneakers that they wear. We can't judge ourselves by that. Because guess what? That's them. Now, it's hard in this society to do that because you got media, people who are trained excellently to do exactly the opposite. You know, how many of you see the see, remember the commercials where you got one guy and he's in his home and so he sees his neighbor, looks over his neighbor, and his neighbor drives up with a certain vehicle. And so then he decides what? He's going to get that same vehicle. Then he turns around and sees his neighbor come in with, you know, this new TV. So he does what? Goes and gets a new TV. Then he sees his neighbor get this cable system. Then he does what? Gets the cable system. Have you ever noticed something, though? You're never going to win. They show something that's so important there. You'll never win. See, this season, this Christmas season, is a prime example of all of that. You know, this is actually, believe it or not, one of the most depressing times of the year for some people. Because they're stuck in this broken measurement standard. They're stuck measuring themselves, and they're feel you got parents and single mothers who feel less of a, a person because they're not able to give their children that new PlayStation 4 like their co-worker does. You understand what I'm saying? This is plague society. It plagues our thought pattern. It plagues us at the core, and we have to become delivered from it because... Even the kids, the kids that they create, see what happens is they create a sense, what advertisers do, they create a sense of discontent, dissatisfaction. They can't sell anything to you if you already got it. But what they do is they create a sense of what you have isn't enough. You need the bigger and better. And then you want it. And the same with the fun. You just got a new one. The next one is coming out. Got to get that new one. Come on. Hello. Come on. It wasn't enough. We got the iPad. Now we got the iPad Mini. Now you got the iPad Air. Yeah. But what we don't realize is that trend is going to continue. Yeah. So you're never really going to have the newest technology. You have the newest technology up to date. But there's always going to be something new. And can I be honest? Can I can I be honest with y'all for a moment? Can I talk from the heart? Sure. Even myself, I used to measure my own personal ministry success by the standards or the success of others' ministries. And I felt like maybe I had missed it. Because I don't have the four thousand seat sanctuary. And looking for a bigger church. And, and looking for a bigger church. <laughs> Maybe I missed it. Because I don't have so many people. I got to go and pick up people. Maybe I missed it. Because I'm not sitting with all the other big wigs. But you know what? I began to understand and realize something. I'm doing exactly what God wants me to be. I'm doing I'm, I'm being who he wants me to be and I'm doing what he wants me to do. And I'm gonna tell you, even when I was being groomed to be a mega pastor, you know, a pastor of a mega church, and I was following along the whole the traditional format, even when I was doing all of that and checking the box for church attendance, three services, and doing this and that, I never was at peace. I never was at peace because even in that time I was looking for man's approval instead of God's approval. God's approval is the only approval that we should be concerned about. 
See, how do I know that I'm on the right track? I have peace now like never before. Even in this, if you, if you look around, as a matter of fact, let me, let, me, let me switch, let me clip it so everybody can see exactly what we're talking about. Some of you might say, man, you left that opportunity. And, and, and look, I'm looking on the camera right now, and I only <laughs> see a few, a handful of people. Guess what? If that means that this is who God has called me to reach for this time and to train up so they can reach others, so be it. This is what God has called me to do. And I realize I'm not going to wait. Now, true, we may eventually get the building. We may do all of that. But guess what? It doesn't have me. That doesn't define me. What defines me is being pleasing to God. That's what defines me. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. But we will not brag about things outside the work that was given us to do. We will limit our bragging to the work that God gave us. And this includes our work with you. Paul is saying, you know what? This is what I'm going to brag about. I'm going to brag about what God is calling me to do. This is it. Now, each and every one of us, if we are brutally honest with ourselves, we can imagine ourselves, imagine yourself like a cup, all right? And that cup has the potential to be 100% full, being fully utilized. But it's up to you and us how much we avail ourselves to be utilized by God. How much are we going to walk in our own purpose that God made for us? That's the standard. That's what you need to be measuring yourself by. Not what someone else has, not what someone else is doing, not what someone else appears to have accomplished, but by what God has for you to do and to be. And then here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5 through 9, Paul says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in you, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, I told you and shared my story. I found my walk to peace. I found my journey. I know how to get there. The question is, do you? Mm -hmm. Have you found your place of peace where you can say that God, you're pleased with me? I want to do, I want to be like the Bible says, and I believe it's Matthew chapter 25, where Jesus tells the story of the parable of the talents. And he gives this person, he gives, you know, he tells the story of this guy who gives three different people a job. He gives one person five talents, one person three, so to say, one person one. The person with five takes his talents, invests it, does what he's supposed to do, comes back with that much and more. The next person comes, does what he's supposed to do, with that much and more. The last person, he takes it. 
and realizes that the dude, that the master is no joke. And what he does is he hides his talent and says, you know what? I was scared to do with it what you gave me. And so here, it's the same thing. And he said, well, you know what? If you knew that I was crazy like that, and this is my version. If you knew I was crazy like that and I was hard and, you know, I, I really have serious standards, you could have left what I had given you and put it in the bank. At least I could have got some interest from that. And so he took from that person and said, here, give me that one talent. Give it to this other person over here who had 10, who had five. And Jesus said, he said to those people, you listen to this. This, this is what all I want to hear. Verses, verse 22, he says, he also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's the only thing I want to hear. God saying, You know what, Darren? I'm proud of you, son. Because you took what I gave you and you did with it what I wanted you to do. Amen. Come on in, bro. I've been waiting for you. How many of you want to hear that? I know I do. That's what it's about. And the only way we can do that, see, you know what I'm not going to hear? He's not going to say, well, Darren, you did good for you, but you didn't measure up to this other bishop over here and all of the things that he did. You don't. You didn't have this great expensive uh, account that you're managing for your church. You didn't do that. No, that's not what he's going to say. He's going to say, "Well done." Came to me. No one came to me. Because you've done exactly what I told you to do. What will he say to you? Is he going to say, you know what? You've done what I told you to do. The only one who can determine that. It's not the media. It's not the person next door. It's not the big brother that you're trying to be like. It's you. And God. Amen? Amen. So, with that in mind, Hmm. Are there any um? I'm gonna be obedient. Are there any questions or comments about this? Okay. I think I believe this. I don't know about you, but this was something that really hit me. And even if I can be even more transparent, I even had a circumstance today where I had an opportunity for the enemy to speak into my ear and say, you know what? You shouldn't have left. You shouldn't have done this. This could be you. But instead, I say, God, I'm thankful because I'm doing exactly what you want me to do. <laughs> Let's pray. Most gracious Father, Lord God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you, God, that you've helped us to understand the importance of measuring ourselves by the true standard. And the only true standard is you. Lord, so many of us are looking to measure ourselves by the other person. And we're looking to say, you know what? I can't do that. I can't, you know, I'm not as tall as that person. I, I'm not able to do that. So many of us are guilty of that. 
we're guilty of putting ourselves, the very creation of God, your very creation that you've made. Your, your word says that we are your handiwork. We're fearfully and wonderful made. We're the work of your hand. So what does that say of you when we say that we are less than what you've made us to be? Or what we think of you? God, I ask you to forgive us. Forgive me, Father, for every time when I looked at myself and I looked down upon myself because I wasn't as good as someone else. Help us to understand, God, that it's not for us to be like Mike. Only thing we can do is to be like who you made us to be and to imitate Christ. That's it. So, Father, help us to judge and see with a true standard. Help us to take real inventory of our lives and what you've called us to do. And help us to understand and determine. To hear from you. To ask the hard question. Are you pleased with who we are and what we're doing? And, Father, if that answer was no, Help us to do everything possible within our means to get to be where we need to be with you. Help us to accept the grace of your Holy Spirit. Help us to accept how you love us and to see ourselves as you see us. I pray, Father God, against the the, the spirit of low self-esteem that's plagued us so many times for all of the hurt, Lord, for all of the tears that have been cried because we don't look like someone else. For every young girl, Lord God, who felt like she wasn't beautiful because she didn't look like the Barbie doll that she was made to to handle and play with. To the young man who felt like I'm not meant to fit in and I'm not handsome because my facial, facial structure is not like somebody else. I don't look like Dre or Drake or anybody else. For the mother who feels that she's less of a mother because she doesn't have as much money as someone else. For the student who feels like he can't be satisfied unless he has the new pair of Jordans to make him. Help him to understand, God, that you have already made him. Mm. God, I pray that you will break these shackles that have been holding us for so long. Let this begin the dialogue, God, to peel off those layers. Thank you so much, God. Because, God, the sooner that we learn to be who we can be, the sooner we can do what you call us to do. And finally, I'm reminded of Jesus. I'm reminded of the temptation that he endured even when he was in the wilderness and said, you know what? You can be just like all the kings of the world. You just bow down and worship me. I'm so thankful that you were not of low self-esteem. That you didn't feel like you had to prove something. But your very existence proved it. Thank you so much, God. And we just give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' wonderful name. Mm.
I hope this has helped to, to set some free chains free. I hope this has been helping some people become free. And the people of God is calling you today. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for loving me, loving us, just because you love us. Not because we're like someone else. <laughs> Thank you so much, God. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being with us today. It's time of P-Town Fresh. Um, for those who are watching online, we thank you for watching, and we just pray that this has been a blessing to you. Uh, this has helped you. I pray that you'll share this truth with someone. Share what you learned today with someone. And please, please apply what you've learned today in your own life. I also pray that, um, you know, if this has been a blessing, you know, please share it with somebody. You know, the link is on YouTube. Feel free, youtube.com slash ptownfresh. It'll be up there. Share it with somebody. Let them know. You can do the same thing. Share it on Facebook. Let this stuff, type of stuff go by. <laughs> the word of God. Because Lord knows we all need it. And if this has been a blessing to you and you want to be a you know, blessing to this ministry or whatever, if you want to offer a donation, feel free. Notice I did not use the terminology tithes at all. You don't, I don't teach that as a concept. If you want to find out about that, look back at some of the messages a couple of weeks before. You can tell Fresh Sunday and you'll understand why. But if you do want to give a donation to this ministry, you know, out of what God has blessed you with, you know, Feel free to do so. You're welcome online. You can get, go to ptownfresh.com, click on the link, and give. But again, I'll encourage you, um, just in the whole practice of giving, make sure that you are right with the people in your life. You know, if you got an issue with your brother, don't give. Get that right first. That's the greatest offer. All right? And the same thing for those here. Um, you can just drop something in the bucket. You know, God blesses you, lays upon your heart. If not, that's fine. Either way. And if you want a tax deductible offering, just uh, make sure you fill out the envelope. All right. So we thank you so much for joining us today. This is a P Town Fresh Sunday edition. Uh, normally, we would be back this uh, Tuesday coming up for P Town Fresh Tuesday, the Bible study, but uh, we won't be doing it this Tuesday. We'll be doing it the next Tuesday. So that's just a notice to make sure you let everyone know. Um, and also just to be praying. All right. So um, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. And I'm excited. So go ahead and share. Love y'all. Be blessed. And, uh, Joe, if you could... Uh, Play a little something. What you got in mind? Um, whatever your heart, whatever your heart has. Some. Some. Some.